Hi everyone, it's Daniel from Homegrown, Melbourne, Australia. Just thought I'd do a quick little video vlog on how my garden's going. A bit of a record of what's going on at different points in time. What I'm growing, what's working, what's not working. Um, I also have a Facebook page uh, where I'm up to about 35 blogs now where I try and do a monthly update. Uh, and it's been going for the last couple of years. Um, yeah, so... Um, Growing my own Melbourne, Australia is my Facebook page. And um, in front of me, well, first of all, I suppose it, it's the 28th of um, January, and uh, it's late afternoon, going into the evening now, after work. And um, I've got a bit of shadows forming here, but I'll press on. In front of me, I've got my Roma tomatoes. The Roma tomatoes went in pretty late. Uh, normally I try and get my tomato crops in around um, the, our cup, Melbourne Cup weekend um, in November, early November. Um, these went in probably about four or five weeks after that. <clears throat> I don't mind putting the Romas and the San Manzino tomatoes in a bit later because they definitely like the warmer weather. And um, they're not that far behind the other varieties. Um, I haven't done a good job of pruning them this year. Um, I went away and um, yeah, missed that opportunity, but we're starting to get some flowers and we're starting to get some very small um, little tomatoes in there. Just starting to form. So these are a 1.2 by 2.4 metre bed. Um, I'm typically putting eight plants of tomatoes in these each year, although this year in another three beds I've only put six just to give that a try for something different because uh, they do get pretty packed. Um, so they're my Romas. I use these little cages that I got from Aldi. They come up once a year, I think around uh, October, September, late September, October time frame in Aldi. I find I have to stake them or they will blow over. I get a bit of wind here. That's typically what I do. The corn hasn't been the success that it has been in other years. Um, it hasn't grown as tall as it normally does. So I don't know if I've got a different variety here in terms of seed because I didn't keep seed from last year. Um, but basically here you can see this didn't fertilise. So basically what I normally do, and I didn't do it this year because I wasn't here to do it, um, I normally take these bits off the top and then rub them down into the tops of the corn. Let's just make sure they fertilise and they start the process correctly. Now they should do it on their own with a bit of wind and so forth. But um, quite a few didn't fertilise this year, so the chooks have got those. The ones that were sort of semi-fertilised. They were appreciative. But we're still getting plenty of nice corn. Over the back, maybe just come around. I've got some self-seeded tomatoes, which I've just let grow. I think they're, uh, what was in that bed last year was a Tommy Toe and some black, little black sized tomatoes. So let them grow to see what happens. Um, here, I think I've got my Gross Lizzie tomatoes. So again, more tomatoes. Normally, I plant um, about four or five, um, <laughs> I've planted up to six zucchini plants in these beds. And again, they just get too overcrowded. So I put three in this year, two green ones and a yellow one. It's giving me more zucchinis than I can eat. Um, if you have more than one zucchini plant, You've got to learn how to make the kenny soup. Um, I've also got uh, money maker tomatoes and Siberian, so Siberian and uh, money maker tomatoes, and so Siberian's supposed to deal with the cold a little bit better. And I did start them a little bit earlier. That's my first year growing those. The money maker, the Gross Lissy, the Roma, San Manzino, the usual varieties that I grow. 
also in late was my capsicums. Um, so they're just starting to take off now. I had a bed of lettuces. Um, lettuces don't last long here in summer. And you can see I've tried to put a bit of shade cloth to slow down the bolting to seed. And we've got a few tomato plants self-seeded in there as well. But um, yeah, the time I pulled them out, gave them to the chooks and got another crop of lettuce in. So that's basically what's going on in the veggie garden. The asparagus has uh, started to fern up. I've just let that fern uh, in the back of the yard. The cherries um, went through to Christmas, so we picked um, the cherries. We got a decent bowl off the star crimson, and we got a, a couple of bowls actually, and then a bowl off each of the lapins. So when I'm saying a bowl, like a big stainless steel bowl, um, off the lapins and the Stella cherries. So I think the star crimson was the star, and I made a bit of a video on the blossom and how that had so much more blossom earlier on. Um, and, and, and that certainly produced the most fruit and so that indication of the blossom was probably uh, a good example of uh, how it was going to end up just point out something here so it's going to come up obviously. so we have a bit of a problem with um, cherry slugs here and so um, in the past year I've used a called Yates success on the trees um, now that I've got bees I'm reluctant to do that and I'm trying to avoid using any uh, herbicides or pesticides um, so I have been throwing an ash they've just about gone I haven't seen any for a couple of weeks now but um, the damage is done to these leaves so uh, but what I did find successful as part of the exercise sorry about the sun there was um, just using ash out of a fireplace and throwing that over the trees so just got an apple tree here and down here we've got the bees they're nice and active got the four boxes on there now and we took a harvest of the honey a couple of weeks ago out of one of the supers and probably got about 10 litres. Just coming back to the cherry slug. So um, the cherry slug love the pears, the cherries. So the pear tree, and you see the brown leaves on there, probably even with the sun playing havoc with the video. Um, so one of the things that I have to do is net anything that's got fruit on it. And, um, I don't know if I can get a bit of picture through the net. But I've got two, two pear trees that have just done uh, really well. Alright, just having a bit of a look in there. In here, maybe this is a better angle. Heaps and heaps of pears on this tree. And we had about 50 mil of rain in the last years. And again, you can see the where the cherry slug's been to work on this pear tree. Um, just trying something different here. It's the first year I've used these water pipes. Um, over the top of the fruit tree. So I do have um, electrical, electrical conduit over the veggie gardens. Um, and I net my seedlings when I first put them in, but um, this is definitely a whole lot easier, sliding nets over these pipes than trying to drag it over the trees themselves. So, fig tree's doing really well. Lots and lots of small figs and the birds haven't started to try and get them yet because I've got another fig tree over here that I grew from a cutting from an old neighbour's uh, backyard and um, 
I haven't netted that yet. And looking at the number of pigs, I think I better. In addition to that, we've got the plum tree. And they're still green. Last year we got uh, a few starting to turn pinkish colour. Maybe I'll see with the net. We got quite a few plums off the other plum tree last year. Um, the other one I've had an aphid problem with this year and the ladybugs moved in and they fixed that problem. Um, but I took the net off and uh, I lost all the fruit off it. So. The nectarine tree that we just put in this year, so it's growing well. As you can see down the bottom we've got this wild strawberry plant, which they happily grow together. We've got the chooks over here, and a one-year-old quince tree. Again, the quince tree suffers from the cherry slug, so um, you want some of that Yates success or little supply of ash. I only went through um, one bucket, probably a 10 litre bucket of ash across my fruit trees. I just take a handful, it goes a long way, kind of throw it from a distance over the leaves. So um, yeah, that's what's been going on there. Coming across orange tree. So the orange tree I don't know how many oranges I got, but it like, would have been somewhere between 30 and 50 last year. And I think I've probably got a similar number this year on there, so... Um, it was literally covered in little tiny oranges and some of the small ones dropped off. And now it's got a lovely medium-sized orange on the way. <laughs> 